Welcome back to the poker vlog. This is episode number 97. We're getting up there. Feels like I haven't really put out a video in a while. I've been pretty busy busting out a World Series events. And I also put together a free roll at the PKC Mansion for the viewers. And uh, for those of you who've signed up for PKC, um, what happened was we had a, a two table satellite going and it was a fully catered event. The top three places uh, were gonna get $1,500 seats to the monster stack. What ended up happening is that when it got down to four players, they did a four-way chop, so they each got 1,000, and then first place got an extra 500. It was a lot of fun, and I ended up getting 11th, which wasn't too great, I lost a flip. But anyway, for this session, we play 2-5 at the Mirage. It's a spontaneous meetup game, and it's a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. I arrived at the Mirage, where Andrew and I said we'd be putting together a last minute meetup game. We notified people on Instagram two hours ahead of time that we were trying to get a 2-5 game going. We end up getting five full tables. I buy in for a thousand, which is the maximum for this poker room. Then we get started. Early on, we're dealt ace-queen offsuit under the gun. I opened to 20. The action's on the middle position player. He looks like he wants to three bet me, but he ends up calling. The cutoff also calls. We go three ways to the flop. It comes queen, five, deuce, rainbow. We've got top pair, top kicker. Life is going great. I lead out for 35. Middle position player calls. The cutoff folds. We're heads up. The turn is a 10, and I'm somewhat concerned that my opponent may have pocket 10s or queen 10, but I bet 85 because there are hands like king, queen, queen, jack, pocket jacks that I can still get value out of, and those are much more likely. If I get raised, I'll let it go. The opponent just flats, feeling like we have the best hand. The river is another deuce. We should still have the lead. I'm going for value. I bet 175. Middle position player reaches for chips. We are gonna get paid or not. The opponent slides in all of his chips. It's 322 total, so only 147 more to me. I'm in the midst of trying to recover from a decent sized downswing. I'm frustrated because it seems like these situations keep happening to me. So you have tens, huh? There aren't any hands that make sense that I'm beating, so I have to let it go. I'm gonna fold, yeah. man. I fold. Three twenty. You fold, right? Yeah. You know I have to. Yeah. 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 Poker hasn't been going all that well lately. If I'm being honest, I have to admit that I'm annoyed by the last hand, but I'm happy with myself being able to make the right laydown. It's not always easy to do when you feel like the poker gods are conspiring against you. I've got to brush that off. I had 500 to the stack, then move on to the next hand to pick up pocket eights in middle position. The player on my right limps in, I raise to 20. The button calls, who's the same opponent that I faced in the last hand. The limper calls as well. We go three ways to the flop. Comes ace eight, deuce, rainbow. We have middle set. There's no way we're behind here. Checks to me, I bet 35. The button calls, I would love to get some sweet revenge on this guy, who happens to be very nice, but I want those Bradley dollars back. The other opponent folds, we're heads up, the turn is the king of clubs, there are two clubs out there, I bet 75. The button calls again, the river is another ace, this is a great card because the button likely has an ace and has now made trips. He shouldn't have ace king or he probably would have three bet preflop. It's unlikely that we'd be up against any other better full house either. We need to think of a bet size that trip aces might call. We could probably make it pretty big. I go with 250. From the time that I announced my bet to the time that the button acts is a full two minutes and 30 seconds. I was hoping for a call, but the button instead folds ace jack clubs face up. It makes a great lay down because it doesn't actually beat anything that I'm betting that big for value there. I ask. Could I fold? <laughs> The rest of the table thinks that I'm bluffing, and I wish I was, and I could show it. Unfortunately, I had the goods. I couldn't get another strong hand to call off. Later, I'm dealt ace king of spades in middle position. I open to 20. The hijack calls. The cutoff puts in a three bet to 90. It's the third time that I've tangled with this guy. It's not a spot I like to be in with ace king. I may have the best hand. I may be crushed. I don't want to call and have to play from out of position. I put in the four bet to 300. Hijack knows that he's in trouble. He folds. Cut off, doesn't snap jam, which is good news. He only has around 300 more, so I'm calling without even thinking about it. If he does, it's not what happens though. Too good for me, Brad. Did you fall? What, what did you fall? Probably should have. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good fall. Good fall. The very next hand to pick up Pocket Kings under the gun plus two, and open to 20. Middle position player calls. Small blind also calls. We go three ways to the flop. It's 8-5-4 with two clubs. Small blind leads for 55. I don't think you do this with a set. Notice that lots of people do this with draws or hand like nines or tens. I put in a raise to 200. Middle position player folds. Small blind calls. We're heads up. The turn is the 10 of clubs. This is a horrible card for us. Small blind checks. I check back. 
The river is another 10. Small blind checks again. I don't think you do that with a hand that has me beat. The problem is that if I wanna bet, the hands that I'm beating can't call very much. So I put in a very small bet of 125. The player puts in a chip and makes the call. We turn over Cowboys, that's good enough. Small blind shows that he has an eight. Imagine he had a hand like ace eight or eight seven. We're rewarded with a nice pot and all of a sudden we're unstuck. We've got just over 1500 in front of us. We then head to a new table where we pick up ace five of hearts onto the gun plus one and open to 20. Middle position player calls, small blind calls. We go three ways to the flop. It's king nine three with two hearts. Good flop for us. We've got a flush draw, backdoor straight draw, and one over. Small blind checks. I bet 40. The middle position player folds. The small blind makes the call. We're heads up. The turn is the five of spades. Small blind checks. I like to check back my pair. The river is an offsuit four. We don't make a flush. Small blind leads for 55. I can't call in this instance, but I don't get the sense that the small blind's very strong. He has a short stack. I put him to the test to see if he wants to play for all of it. My line doesn't make any sense. This is solely an exploitative play against someone who I don't think will pick up on the fact that I'm usually not gonna have much here. Small blind tosses cards in the muck. We get the bluff through and take it down. A few hands after, we pick up king queen suited under the gun plus one. The under the gun player limps in. I raise to 20. Small blind, who's a new player from Singapore that has made it clear that he wants to get on the vlog. Three bets to 80. Under the gun folds. I call. We're heads up. Flop is 6-5-5 five, five with two clubs. We've got two overs and a flush draw, plus we're in position. Small blind leads for 75. It's a price I'm happy to call. I toss in chips. The turn is the nine of diamonds. There are two diamonds now. Small blind bets again, but this time for 200. It's an interesting spot to be in. It's a pretty bad board for value hands. It'll be in his three bet range because the board connects well with middle and low cards. At best, he'll have an over pair. At race here, I could potentially get him to fold one of those hands or perhaps a flush draw like ace king or ace queen of diamonds. If I do get called, I'll have plenty of outs. I wind it up and rip it in. Come on. It doesn't take too long before the opponent folds face up. I'm surprised to see what he lays down. What is it? King, queen, no diamonds. It's a pretty good hand. Oh. I get him to fold essentially the same hand as me. The pot goes to us. The opponent is sad at first, but then he realizes there's a silver line. We make another move that works out, and we're up a few hundred dollars before we pick up pocket aces under the gun plus one. Under the gun limps in. I raise to 20. The hijack calls, the small blind calls, and under the gun calls. We go four ways to the flop. It's king nine five with two diamonds. Small blind under the gun check. I bet 50. The hijack calls. The other two players fold. It's heads up. The turn is the 10 of hearts. This board is a little too coordinated. It's time to pot control. I check. The hijack bets 75. I make the call. The river is the four of diamonds. It's not terrific for us. I check. The hijack checks back. I turn over the aces while the other player announces that he has a nine. A nine is not going to win. We get all the money, and that's the last big hand that we play. This poker hasn't been going all that well leading up to this session. I was stuck 500 to start. I decide it's best if I book a win to get some confidence going and I rack up. I won 440 today over about four hours, which is great. I got stuck $500 right away. It's not fun. Kind of thought that. I was just gonna get torched again. And I'm still not really out of the downswing fully, so I gotta put in hours, play as much cash as I can, and hopefully run well in one of these series events. We will see. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. I wanna give a huge thanks to the Mirage and everybody who showed up for that uh, last minute meetup game. That was really cool. Uh, it's, it's fun to do these during the World Series because there's a lot of people who are in town who aren't normally, so um, it's fun to meet everybody. Uh, the next meetup games are gonna be July 24th at the Iowa Casino in Pompano, Florida. It's our first meetup game out there. And then we're going to Maryland Live after that. That's where the biggest meetup game of all time was. I think we had 22 or 23 tables. So that'll be July 30th. So super pumped up um, for those events. And then we might put together one last World Series event, maybe perhaps like towards the end of the main event uh, here. In, at South Point in Las Vegas. So if you're in town for any of those, then uh, be sure to come out. 
Um, I mentioned that I was in the midst of a downswing in this when this session was going on. I'm luckily almost completely out of that. Cash games have gone really well. Uh, I've run great in 510 and just big pots in general. So I've won all nine of my sessions this month. Unfortunately, tournaments are kind of the opposite. I'm 0 for 5 in World Series events, just not really running good, and I can't get anything going. It's been pretty frustrating. Uh, be sure to check out Andrew Nimi's video. He, he uh, documented the tag team event that we played in together, so uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, main event is coming up July 5th. I'm excited for that, and I just have two more tournaments left to go, so hopefully I can get on the board. Hope you guys are all doing well. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.